It's not about perfection. It's not about how much weight is lifted or how many miles can be ran. It isn't about the wins or losses or even the competition. At the end of the day, it's about you. How you feel about yourself. It's about making progress. It's about pushing yourself and learning just how far you can take it. It's about setting goals and demolishing them. It's about seeing the limits and knowing you are limitless. It's about never giving up and never giving in. Do you have what it takes? 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 Now it's party. Welcome back to Gear TV episode five. I'm Jeff, the producer, joined as always by my co host, Joe Pietaro, editor in chief of Fitness RX for Men. What's going on? Hey, Jeff, how are you? I'm pretty good. Uh, Fitness RX for Men online. The That's online out. Online edition of. Yes. <laughs> um, in news this week for Gear, Cat Tech Stores, former NPC competitor, won her pro card by winning Class A in bikini this past weekend at the 2014 North American Championship. Um, Cat Tech Stores has been fighting for the pro card, you know, over the past couple of shows. She was in Chicago, um, and, you know, she looked amazing. She's one of these girls, okay, who, when she came on the scene, has natural, you know, muscle, okay? She had to really tone down a lot, and, uh, you know, she put in a lot of hard, you know, hard work, and she's now a pro for uh, Team Gear. I mean, that's great. Anytime you can get another gear out, Athlete, winning their pro card and moving on in their career in a professional level, and then I believe you predicted that last show. That's right, because because I wanted to call her <laughs> IFBB Pro Cat, there and you like go. I couldn't remember her name, and I realized, like, wait a minute, you see? So I told you, I knew it. it was right? a good luck charm. <laughs> <laughs> IFBB Pro Cat Tech Stores, congratulations! Uh, we're uh, happy to have you as part of Team Gear Athletes, and in just a couple of weeks, uh, uh, an amazing show coming up—the 50th anniversary of the Olympia contest, 50 years of the Mr. Olympia, okay? And this year, again, I, I've been saying it for the last couple of shows, I think that this one brings it back to that classic, huge, muscle, just ripped, shredded 90s look, okay? You have a lot of guys up there who just are tremendously built, overly muscled. Um, this is going to be really hard to pick the top five, okay, in terms of after that top three. I think I think you and I both have an idea of who the top three is going to be, mm -hmm. but in that fourth and fifth slot, it's going to be very interesting. So what I want to do, even though we're still about two and a half weeks away? the uh, Yeah, it's the weekend of the 18th, yeah. 19th, and 20th of September. So yeah. so two and a half weeks to get uh, a gay because I'm happy. Two and a half <laughs> weeks a gay. Two and a half weeks away. Yeah, that's because I'm looking at Pete the intern. Uh, two, <laughs> two, two and a half weeks away, the Mr. Olympia contest. So I'm going to do something that's unprecedented, okay? I want to do a prediction show today. Let's go. So that we can either look like complete geniuses or complete idiots. But either way, let's like take the risk because that's what we like to do on Gear TV. We take the risk where no one else will. So top five for the Mr. Olympia. Should I go first or you go first? That's up to you. I don't care. All right. Why don't we, why don't we work from the top down, okay? We're going to make sure. this really simple and quick. In first place, I have Phil Heath coming in only because every year I see this guy. 3D muscle, and I think the one chance that he had, you know, an opportunity to slip up was when Kai Green came in, I think it was the second battle, where I believe that Kai Green actually did look better on that stage, and since he didn't get the nod, that tells me that the judges are looking at Phil's physique in a way where it's like, look, not only does he have the muscle bellies, the, the shape, the shreddedness, the hardness, but he, he's just a perfect epitome of what a bodybuilding physique should be. From the pictures that I've seen in the last few weeks, he's 3D. He's bigger than what he was. He's more shredded than what he was. I don't think there's any question that Phil Heath will repeat four-time Mr. Olympia this year. I agree. Phil is definitely the, uh, the top guy on that stage, hands down. He has a great look to him. He has a small waist for a guy with such, you know, width on him. And, I mean, there's always a chance a guy comes in off. That's not going to happen. Phil is going to win his fourth in a row. Exactly. And, uh, you know, he's, he's one of those physiques. He's like a Lee Haney, Dorian Yates, yes. Ronnie Coleman, where if he shows up, he wins. Exactly. And the only way he loses, the only way he loses is if he's way off. Just like, just like Jay got knocked off that one. He was off, and yeah. it was obvious. So Phil Heath, I believe, will win the Olympia number, number four, and we're in agreement with that, right? Yeah, definitely. Siskel and Ebert are in agreement. <laughs> Thumbs up from each of us. In second place, this is where it gets really interesting, okay? Yes. I think there's no doubt it's a toss-up between Dennis Wolf and Kai Green. 
I think Kai Green was the kind of, you know, the bridesmaid for three years in a row. I think that if he would have been Mr. Olympia, they would have given it to him already. Because, again, I think he brought in his best shape, not last year, but the year Two before. Two years ago, yeah, definitely. Dennis, he, was, he was leading, I believe, they were saying, like in a prejudging. Oh, absolutely. Kai. But oh. then the night show, Phil tightened up a little bit, dropped some water, and right. Phil got the nod. Right, he put down the water bottle he was carrying, <laughs> and that's it. But in, in, in second place, although my heart goes out to Kai Green, I'm going to call the upset and say that Dennis Wolf is going to come in second. Why? Winner of the Arnold Classic this year. Mm -hmm. He was always kind of picked to be a future Mr. Olympia. Okay. I think that finally he got the look that he was supposed to get a year or two ago on that Arnold stage. When he, when he walked out, I'm like, wow, if he brought this package last year, it would have been an upsetting, you know, competition for the Olympia. If he looks the way he looked at the Arnold and we know he's going to probably be about two or three pounds better, if not five to seven pounds better on the Olympia stage, I think he's going to take that second play slot away from Kai Green. I don't even think it's going to be that close. I think Dennis is definitely going to look better than Kai Green. Kai, you always worry about him looking too bloated, too big. Dennis, you don't worry about that. He has a different type of body style. I think definitely him winning the Arnold puts him right up there as the second best bodybuilder in the world. I think head and shoulders. I don't think he's going to really make Heath go right to the last minute. But I think he's going to, as soon as we see them on stage, we're going to know right away Dennis is ahead of Kai. Right. And like, again, I don't think it's a battle between Dennis and Phil. I think it's a battle between Dennis and Kai. Yes. And, um, you know, again, with all the comparisons being made, even, even in pictures, again, if you take the best Kai Green against the best Dennis Wolf, I just think that Dennis Wolf bests him. He has a slightly smaller waist. He has a slightly more pleasing structure. Kai Green comes off to me as the perfect big bodybuilder, you know, the big shredded guy, but he should have gotten his nod a couple of years ago. And if, and, and if they're not going to give it to him a couple of years ago, I don't see how a perfect Dennis Wolf can't possibly beat Kai Green, who I have in third place. Yeah, no, I definitely think Dennis uh, last year, you know, like you said, it was really a close battle. It could have won either way. I think this year Dennis bets him without a problem. And like, again, this has nothing to do with Kai personally. I mean, me personally, if I had to pick it on like an emotional basis, I pick Kai any day of the week. Just a great person, a great guy. And again, a guy who I thought should have deserved it a couple of years ago. So, but that notwithstanding, so far, both of us are in agreement. Yeah, yeah. So, so we got one, two, three. We're so we got Phil Heath in first this year. We have Dennis Wolf in second and Kai Green in third. Now, the mm -hmm. interesting part, okay, because there's a lot of wild cards and we're not really yes. sure who's going to show up where or when. Now, I'm, I'm going to go by the people that are being spoken about recently, okay? And I'm, I'm going back only about like four weeks, okay? Because every year, you know, there's like people who are hyped up and usually this is how it turns out. We've been hearing a lot lately, a lot out of nowhere about Dexter Jackson, okay? Mm -hmm. And we've seen comparison pictures now of the upper body for Dexter Jackson put right next to Phil Heath. Now, I don't think Dexter has a chance to crack second or third. I think those are locked in with Dennis and Kai. However, that fourth place slot, I think is very open and very available for a guy like Dexter Jackson. Now, a lot of people would say Sean Roden in fourth. Mm -hmm. I haven't heard a thing or seen anything about Sean Roden. I believe he could possibly be a dark horse this year. But usually you see at least one picture. I haven't seen a thing. I don't know about you, but mm -hmm. my, I guess, again, controversial pick this year would be Dexter Jackson in fourth place, just based on the fact that I've never seen him look like this ever. I did see the pictures of Dexter. He looked fantastic. He looked grainy. You know, this is, I guess it was probably about a week or so ago. So almost a month out, he almost looked like he was in contest shape. Dexter is always in great condition. He's always fantastic. But I just think that, him to be in fourth i'm a big sean roden fan and i i haven't seen any shots of sean online but to me sean is got like almost the perfect body i mean he's got such a small waist he's so big all around he's great he's got nice roundness he's got good detail to him i think because you haven't heard anything about sean doesn't mean that sean's not ready for the show i think it's going to be tight i think if dexter looks the way he did in those pictures and we know he always comes in in great shape but I still see Sean Roden being the fourth place. And I remember Sean Roden was third place a couple sure, of years ago. Of course, I mean, he, yeah. That was his breakout year. That's I mean, right. He had a few, a few wins in the circuit and then had a great Olympia. Came basically out of nowhere. This guy didn't compete for seven years <laughs> before he got his pro card. So it's an amazing story in itself, just what he did. But I think he hangs around good enough. He makes the pose down again. I think he takes fourth in this show. Mm. If I, if I had to look at Sean Roden and compare him to someone, I would compare him to a Flex Wheeler. Okay? Yeah. You know, he's called Flexitron, by the way. So, yeah. And, uh, you know, we both know that that's not to flex. Now, he has the muscle bellies. He has the look. I just think that the look has transformed back to the 90s physiques. And, like, again, to see Dexter up there, it's just my personal opinion, you know, to see a former Mr. Olympia compared to Phil Heath already, 
And you're right. You know, you never know how these guys look, especially if they're hiding. Like, who mm-hmm. knows? He could have put on 20 pounds of muscle and shut both of us up and come in and win everything. Yeah. Okay. And Sean Roden does have the perfect bodybuilding physique that I think is a blend of classic and new. I just don't mm-hmm. think that that's what they're looking for. I, I, I think that there is a shift happening where it is going back to that bigger, bulkier look. Could Sean Roden come out of nowhere and put on a little bit more mass and look like that Flex Wheeler who should have won the one year against <laughs> Ronnie? Absolutely. And by the way, that was 99. So we were both wrong. I said 98, 97. <laughs> You know, I had to check, you know, finally my uh, guy behind the camera told me it was 99. <laughs> but um, so so in fourth place, you have Sean Roden and I have uh, De- uh, Dexter Jackson. That's the yeah. only place that we differ so far. And I think we're going to differ on the next one also. <laughs> in fifth place, okay, um, I'm going to say Big Rami is going to oh. take fifth. And the reason why I say Big Rami is taking fifth, I believe he came in eighth last year. Yes. Okay, he came in eighth place last year, two-time New York Pro winner. Mm-hmm. He was counted out of the New York Pro one week before the New York Pro. He was not supposed to do that show. Yeah. He decided, you know what, I'm going to come in. And I said to myself, there's no way. He guest posed two weeks prior, I think, in Pittsburgh. Okay? Mm-hmm. And the way he looked on stage, he was holding water. He looked fat. Uh, he, he looked, looked bloated. He was way out of contest. He straight. dropped about 10,000 pounds, come shredded <laughs> to the New York Pro stage besting an incredible looking Juan Diesel Morel yeah. okay who I, I, I mean you know Juan brought in his absolute greatest package that I've ever seen personally mm-hmm. and by the way he's gonna look amazing at the Olympia too but Rami I just think Rami has a way he has that special blend whatever it is he knows he knows the diet he knows mm-hmm. what to take he knows how to train he has it and plus he's under the tutelage of uh, Dennis James who yeah. must have the magic potion because this guy always brings it I think that this is the year that they push Rami into the top five to get him more notice to, to set him up for an eventual battle with that top position what do you think I don't see Rami doing as good as you do. I obviously what he did f- between the whole thing with his illness and he was in the hospital and then not going to do the New York Pro and then eleventh hour came into the New York Pro and deservedly won that show. I mean, it wasn't like they just gave it to him because he was a defending champion. He looked fantastic that night in Manhattan. So I think that was his peak this year. Last year. I mean, who knows? It was his first Olympia. He wasn't nearly as good a shape as he was in May when he won his first New York Pro. I think that Big Rami is still got a little bit ways to go to timing, even under the tutelage of DJ. DJ, I think Rami is maybe in a couple of years is going to be a top three Olympia, but I don't think he makes even the top six this year. Who makes the uh, fifth place in your I got Dexter over there. Oh, Dexter, okay. Yeah. Which is which is fair because I mean yeah. you know both of us think that Dex is going to be in the top five somewhere. It's just I mean yeah. just just to look at the way that he's compared to Phil right now, you know the upper body and you know he is the blade and so he is going to bring blade. a shredded package. I'm the blade, man. Yeah, <laughs> I am the blade. Listen, ain't no one going to talk about me. I'm the blade, then Jack. But 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 you know I I think that when he's standing next to Phil, that is going to be an incredible battle. I think they're going to have to separate them just so they can open up the two and three slot because <laughs> you know this is a former Mr. Olympia coming back. That better. holds a lot of a lot of weight. Of course weight, it yeah. does. Of course, and you know we always see that 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 olympia slot okay whenever an olympia comes back and he's defeated always the year after they always give him the fourth place Mm -hmm. dexter is now making a real strong you know vie for that top slot again so you have him in uh fifth i have him in fourth and um in fifth place uh i have rami and you have uh, dexter and who do you have in fourth uh, in uh fourth again sean you have sean wrote okay so here we go top five picks for the mr olympia 2014 about two and a half weeks out i got phil heath Dennis Wolf coming in second, Kai Green coming in third, Dexter Jackson fourth, and Big Rami coming in fifth. What do we got, Joe, for your picks? I got Phil, Dennis, Kai, Sean, and Dexter. Now, you see both of us, uh, you know, have have like top three picked out and similar, yeah. which is interesting because I think a lot of people would disagree and put Kai in the second position. I mean, you can make that argument either way. It's, but but you know, I am, I'm confident enough to say that I do believe that Dennis will be, will be second this I year. Don't, like I said, I don't think it's even going to be close between second and third. Yeah, he finally brought in that package. That's our picks on Gear TV. Joe Piatara, Jeff the Producer, Gear TV Live Episode 5. We'll be back in just a second. Don't go nowhere. It's not about perfection. It's not about how much weight is lifted or how many miles can be ran. It isn't about the wins or losses or even the competition. At the end of the day, it's about you. How you feel about yourself. It's about making progress. 
It's about pushing yourself and learning just how far you can take it. It's about setting goals and demolishing them. It's about seeing the limits and knowing you are limitless. It's about never giving up and never giving in. Do you have what it takes? Welcome back to Muscle in the Afternoon on Gear TV. I'm Pete Kucharian. As we're now two and a half weeks out of the Olympia, we have a lot of excitement coming up heading into Vegas where it will be a battle for the 50th Sandow as Phil Heath defends his title against a very hungry lineup of competitors. But first, let's talk about this past weekend. Last weekend at the 2014 IFBB North American Championships, we saw many IFBB pro celebrities, but an even bigger name was in the house when The Rock Dwayne Johnson showed up to hang out with Jim Mannion. Showing his respect and passion to the sport of bodybuilding, The Rock hung out with Kai Green and even made his way over to Jim Mannion's private gym for a workout. On a side note, an Olympian competitor we have not heard much about recently also met up with Dwayne, as Sean Roden posted this picture covered up in the gym. Although this is probably the most accurate representation of his current conditioning, all he can make of it right now is that he is in fact sporting enough muscle to make The Rock look small. In the Olympia 212 news, Gear Nooch's very own Aaron Clark posted a two weeks out progress photo showing that always condition that full physique would come to expect. Consistently coming in shape and at the top of his game, it's no question Clark will be bringing his best. Another competitor with recent news is Hidetada Yamagishi, announcing his entry to the 212 Olympia after competing in the Open class five times since 2007. It says his goal is a 212 Olympia title. That's it for this edition of Muscle in the Afternoon, but for now, make sure to check out Gear TV's YouTube channel at youtube.com slash GearNutra. Then head over to the Instagram page at GearNutraceutical, and of course, visit our website at GearNutra.com. More Gear TV to come with Jeff the Producer right after this. Welcome back to Gear TV, Episode 5. I'm Jeff, the producer. As always, sitting next to my co-host, Joe Pietaro, editor-in-chief of FitnessRxForMen.com. This week, we have another special guest. Uh, actually, we have two special guests. Last week, we had P28 uh, owner, IFBB Pro, William Sullivan, to give us some insight into the uh, P28 and how we started the company. And, of course, introducing high-protein foods without changing your diet, but rather incorporating things like bread and peanut butter and, you know, things that regular people eat as opposed to protein shakes and all this other crap. Grilled chicken all the time yeah, right exactly <laughs> so you know it gave you an alternative to actually make your regular sandwiches and just boost up the protein thereby raising your metabolism and having something sensible to eat as an extension to that we thought it would be a good idea to have on the president and ceo of fuel foods fuel meals or fuel, fuel foods meals. fuel, fuel meals. meals you see i knew i was gonna screw it up fuel <laughs> meals uh ceo joe burgos and of course president maurice Cecilia, also a bodybuilder maurice Cecilia, and we'll get into that later on <laughs> <laughs> a good bodybuilder by the way so i'm back in 2009 at the atlantic state show when they still had a show so joe why don't we start with you talk about fuel meals the concept behind it and how you guys get started well um basically we started you know not too long ago, we started uh, December 2013. Um, you know, me and Maurice have been involved in different uh, business ventures before. We've been involved, you know, in the supplement industry. Um, so we weren't new to the actual industry, uh, but we were taking a break from, you know, uh, selling our company, our, our, our supplement company, Gen Labs. And what we did, we, you know, Maurice, being a nutritionist and he does diets and stuff like that, we figured out that there was. You know, there was a problem with people, especially with his clients and everybody, just having a problem, you know, getting the right meals together, not either not having the time or just not knowing what to cook, when to cook, you know. So we figured, you know, we could actually do something, um, you know, to help these people out, but on a big scale. You know, there's a lot of small uh, meal prep companies around. We wanted to take it to another level. You know, we wanted to be able to service the entire nation um, and, you know, fuel meal started <laughs> right. basically you know maurice let me ask you a question um when you when you talk about fuel meals to someone and they and they come up to you and say you know i see people eating these like little boxes that that, that kind of look like little six pack uh, bags uh how would you how would you describe what it is that you do and what your company provides well we we have two different avenues that uh, clients can you know 
choose to go down. Uh, we have a uh, customer uh, custom entree section where the customer can build uh, the meals to their exact specification. So pick a protein, a carb, and a veggie. And uh, we also have signature entrees, which are basically preset meals. There's no customization on those. They are what they are, and uh, you know it makes their life easier. Um, so that's basically you know what we provide to to clients. Give me an example of like a lunch or a dinner, just something like one of your basic packages. What does that meal include in it? Well, each meal, for the most part, uh, with the exception of some of the signature entrees, contain a uh, protein serving, mm -hmm. uh, carb serving, and a vegetable serving. Uh, the custom meals are really um, open-ended. Uh, so a client can pick eight ounces of protein, four ounces of carbs, and half a right. cup of veggies, or they can pick 10 ounces of protein, six ounces of carbs and two cups of veggies. Um, the signature entrees, there's two sizes, there's a full portion and a half portion. A full portion is eight ounces of protein, a cup of rice or eight ounces of potatoes and a cup of veggies. And then the half portions are exactly half of that. Uh, so, you know, the, the, custom is, the custom end of the meals is really open-ended. There's, there's really no um, one answer or one solution. Mm -hmm. There's a different solution for every client. What are some of the different protein options? Uh, right now we have uh, grass-fed uh, flank steak, mm -hmm. we have uh, chicken, ground turkey, ground beef, cod, salmon, tilapia. Am I missing anything? Uh, Sushi! Egg whites. <laughs> we have egg whites. Yeah. Um, I think that's, that's it for now. And, mm -hmm. and I think we're also going to be coming out with uh, mahi-mahi and, uh, and some turkey uh, breasts in now, the near future. Maurice, let me ask you a question. Let's say, you know, like, you know, a regular guy like me traveling, okay? You know, a lot of times I have to go to the shows and cover the show for, you know, for whatever purpose and be there for about like 18 hours. Would you, uh, you know, a few meals be able to provide me a week's worth of meals while I'm at that show? Um, well, you know, as you guys probably know, um, we, we already provide that service to a lot of competitors, a lot of IFBB pros, NPC athletes, mm -hmm. WBFF athletes. Um, and, and professional athletes right. in all the major sports in the United States. Um, so yeah, uh, even if you were to go on vacation, not so much a, a business trip and you just wanted to eat clean, uh, we ship uh, to all 50 states as well as Puerto Rico. So if you're going on an international business trip to Puerto Rico, we can accommodate that. All you would have to let us know is the day you're flying in and what hotel you're staying at, we'll ship the meals out to you. Uh, we'll coordinate it with the hotel so when you check in, the meals are ready to go. Yeah, you see, that's, that, that's really convenient because a lot of people, especially us, you know, traveling all the time, you know, looking, looking for food in the hotel. I mean, like, number one, you're paying up the butt for a steak meal and rice. And, it's, and, and most of the time, you're not going to find something right. that's even half clean meal. You're right. going to get garbage that's going to be fattening stuff anyway. And not only that, but, but I've actually tried a few meals here, you know, obviously spending a lot of hours in the studio. And I mean, you know, the stuff tastes really good. So obviously, you know, the, the, the palate is broad. It's not just, you know, this dry, regular stuff that you give to people. It's actually really well flavored. Now, how many, you know, Joel, let me ask you, how many people do you have cooking? the food? Do you have like a variety of chefs? Do you have people in different places or is it centralized in one location? Well, we have one central location right now in New Jersey. Um, basically, we have a staff of 12. We have wow. two We have two cooks and we have uh, one uh, sous chef and then we have a, a ton of prep guys, you know, that do all the prepping of the food. So basically, you know, we have a full staff preparing the food. And, um, you know, one of, uh, you know, the athletes that I know that I speak to frequently, uh, gear athlete Jason Poston, he loves your stuff, okay? Now, he actually has a special need being a diabetic. And, you know, he really does, does, does depend on you guys, you know, to actually get this done. Now, when you talk about customization of meals, is he one of those special cases where you have to be careful of how much carbs you put in there and how much, you know, what, what, what protein source? Give, give me an example, without giving away all of Jason's secrets, <laughs> give me an example of what you would provide to a person like Jason, who is a competitive athlete, who has to get, you know, who has to make sure that his uh, macros are very very meticulous. How would you go about, you know? Well, doing one that? of the things that, that we offer is the, you know, the specifications and the customization of a meal to your exact, you know, details, whatever your macros are. So for somebody like Jason, for example, you know, who's a type one diabetic, you know, we have to be very meticulous in that, in the sense that he's very particular in the kind of carbs that he has to have. The portion has to be correct. So, um, you know, when he's dieting for a show or even when he's not dieting for a show, he's, he's one of these athletes that's on all all the time you know his diet is you know clean all year round sure. he's very he knows his body more than most people do you know um, but to that end you know 
four ounces of sweet potatoes means four ounces of sweet potatoes. You know, and it, you know, there has to be no additives, no preservatives, you know, no extra sugars, no cinnamon, none of that. You know, so, you know, to that end, you know, we're very specific, not only just with Jason, but with all our athletes and all our customers. Um, when they say they want something, whether it be no salt, no seasoning, um, plain, you know, four and a half ounces, you know, six ounces, whatever it is, it's measured exactly to those specifications. You know, so we do, we do detail, uh, macros for everybody just just to piggyback on what he said in terms of salt and sodium content within the meals um, all our BYO uh, meals build your own meals the custom meals uh, don't contain any sodium right all the meat is seasoned with uh, organic non-sodium seasoning mm -hmm. uh, some of the signature entrees do contain a little bit of sodium but that's only because of some of the sauces that we use but none of the entrees go over above 200 milligrams of sodium, and that's a full portion entree. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously zero to very little in the, in the BYO meals, because you know meats do have natural sodium in them uh, to begin with. So uh, we, we try and stay away from salt as much as possible. Have you guys noticed that uh, is your you know clientele, uh, obviously not just guys that are competing in fitness, bodybuilding, that type of thing, and also, like you said, pro athletes like ball players. but have you noticed there's any other clients like somebody that's new into getting into fitness that has no idea of what to eat, and they said this is much simpler than me figuring out and cooking it myself? Absolutely, absolutely. We have a lot of you know regular people, you know weekend warriors, people who are just getting into fitness who, you know, don't have the knowledge of, you know, what to eat, when to eat, how to eat it, how to prepare it. And, you know, our service does all that for them. You know, it takes all the thinking out of it, you know, and, you know, like, like Jeff touched on, you know, the food, especially the entrees, you know, you're, you know you're eating clean, but it still tastes good. It doesn't feel like you're dieting, you know. So they, they more likely than not start with our entrees, and as they start to progress and get more serious <clears throat> in their fitness goals, they'll start to customize meals for themselves and figure out, you know what, I need six ounces of chicken, you know, and half a cup of rice, you know, a cup of spinach, so on and so forth. So, uh, yeah, we've noticed a lot of um, regular clients you know, use our, our food uh, for their dieting purposes. We, we get a lot of emails on a daily basis from clients that are uh, dieting for the first time. Uh, we do help them out as much as yeah. possible, but we always say that, you know, you should consult with a nutritionist uh, prior to, you know, beginning a, a diet regimen in order to have them really, you know, lay the foundation of where you need to go and where you want to be in the next six months. Um, you know, us giving you advice through email is, is really not going to be... Um, beneficial in terms of what you're trying to do until you speak with somebody who actually can meet with you in person and and lay out the foundation for you um, and then when you're ready we could facilitate and accommodate your needs based on their recommendations for you as a, as a client right. we're talking to fuel meals that was maurice asia president of fuel meals and of course joe burgos uh, ceo of fuel meals i'm jeff the producer with of course joe pietaro now let me ask you a question back when, when you were competing okay um when you when you used to prep your meals where did you have help did you did you, did you ask for help like you know at the time was there someone around that was able to help you prep the meals did you wish you had someone is this part of why you started tell, the company tell them about your chicken <laughs> oh, oh wait a minute wait, we have a special chicken story now yeah, inside so, story. I'll, I'll, I'll get to the chicken story after i answer your question um no i was living on my own i was uh i think i was 21 or 22 at the time and uh you know i was living with my ex who's my my child's mother my daughter's mother at the time and you know she worked crazy hours and you know i just i hated cooking for myself i, I really did and and you know no one really helped me my mother would help me from time to time if i was really in a gym and i said listen i'm dropping off a box of tilapia i need you to cook this <laughs> um, but i didn't hear the end of it you know after the show even after i won the show uh, she, she would, uh, you know, still talk about, you know, she still talks about it. She still brings it up from time to time how much her house stunk like fish of for course. months on end. Mm -hmm. um, but to what he said, his point with the chicken, um, about two or three years ago, I was, I was cooking for myself again, and I would bring in this chicken to work, and, you know, after three or four days of it sitting in the refrigerator, because we airtight seal the meal, so they're good in the refrigerator for right. up to seven days, uh, sometimes ten days, oh, depending wow. on what the contents of the meal mm -hmm. is. And if you freeze them, they, they, they stay fresh much longer. But when you put stuff in Tupperware, it doesn't stay fresh as long. So after about three or four days, the chicken would get dry and rubbery. And, you know, I don't know what I'm doing in, in the kitchen. You know, I mean, I could put together a, a, a ramen noodle bowl, but I, I can't really cook. And um, I, I would just gag on my chicken. 
I mean, I, I think I threw up in front of him one time. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and making everyone else gag because yeah, yeah. of the, the yeah, stench. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, there was about five or six other people in, a, in, in our uh, you know, lunch room. We'd all yeah. eat lunch together, all the employees of Jen. See, another reason to get fuel meals because you don't have to worry about that gag anymore. Well, You're getting fresh that issue, and Yeah, I haven't had that issue since we started this company because the guys who cook the food are actually uh, traditionally trained chefs. Mm -hmm. um, so they know what they're doing. You know, um, they, they, they have a nice way... A nice process of the way they cook their chicken. Um, we don't cook it in a traditional sense. They sear it on both sides and then they throw it in a convection oven. Yeah, you don't um, want to give away all yeah, the yeah, secrets yeah. now. <laughs> <laughs> Just know that few meals. <laughs> <laughs> okay, they had this much. Well, the point is it stays juicy. <laughs> yeah, right, 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 right. Even after it's been microwaved. And obviously that's why the food comes out the way it does. You know, you guys have a specialized process and, you know, that's, that's what makes it taste good. So, but um, I'm like assuming, obviously after a while, you said to yourself, I'm not going to burden my mom, I'm not going to burden, you know, <laughs> the, the person that I'm with. I need to come up with an idea to do this. Now, did you have chefs in mind already that like you said, well, I'm going to pick this guy out or did people approach you and say, I think you need, you know, you need to use this person to be your chef? Because obviously, again, this stuff is good. I, not, I think you know, Joe yeah. pretty much dealt with that. So, so that basically we stumbled on a situation um, where there was a company that was doing something similar, right, but was really s suffering in terms of sales and they were struggling. Um, so we went in there and we pretty much took all their employees, <laughs> <laughs> basically, and we, you know, they, they had been in the industry for five years. They, they knew exactly what they were doing already. So we, we sort of, you know, stumbled onto this perfect situation and the chefs um, were, it, it was like, you know, it was like walking into like, you know, it was like finding gold. I mean, these guys knew how to prep chicken. They knew how, and then all we had to basically tell them is, you know, you guys have done this, you know, in a different kind of industry, in a different kind of environment. You're good with the mass production. We're taking this to another level. So we had to sort of guide them into, into our industry. And the bottom line was we told them, if you could appease these clients, these athletes, right, in their food and make them happy, you can make anybody happy. These are the most, you know, <laughs> the most specific, yeah. you know, uh, requirements in, in any kind of food industry, you know, so, um, and they've got it down to a T, they've got it down to a science. These guys crank out thousands and thousands of meals a day. I mean, they're, they are phenomenal. I tell you though, you, you, a lot of people don't realize how important food is. Now, I, I probably am a little older than everybody else in this no, room. No, who would never be able just, to tell that? Just a couple of <laughs> But I, I used to be able to get away with eating garbage, and I could get up and go out all night and get up and go to the gym the next day. Obviously, those days are long gone. Yeah, last week was... Yeah, yeah. I wish <laughs> I were doing the uh, disco with my John Travolta <laughs> white suit on. But um, I noticed that as the years got on, if I didn't clean up my diet, all of that trying to sleep good and work out good it i didn't it didn't matter i had to really completely clean my diet up and i had to cut all the bad carbs out and stuff like that so i've noticed as i got older and in my i'm in my 40s now nutrition is without it forget about it i mean and i'm not competing i'm just right. doing it for myself just mm -hmm. to try to feel healthy and stay young looking i have it's a feeling like you have a new client i'm not sure yeah, yet, not, but, you know. uh, listen we got you're gonna open the back of the truck and throw a few in my car you know but i mean obviously I, do you have any idea like what percentage of your clients are like guys that are in the 40 and over range um, percentage, exact percentages, no. Just, you know, but, ballpark uh, ballpark, figure, like. I would say, you know what, a lot of our athletes, a lot of our clients um, are more normal people than athletes. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what we've noticed. Um, you know, we have, you know, regular, you know, stay-at-home moms, you know, from the Midwest that want to just, you know, change up their diets and start eating clean again. Uh, we have, you know, that demographic is, is, is huge with us. Um, you know, we have a lot of um, people who've dieted before but don't, are, are, are lost. You know, nothing's worked for them they don't know what to do you know so um, we have a lot of run you know regular run-of-the-mill people um, and I would say you know uh, our demographic hits hits probably anywhere between that 30 to 45 range mm -hmm. you know um, we have a lot more women than we have men you know um, for some reason nowadays you know with the whole you know industry with the bikini and and everything that this industry has evolved to you know more women are are, are coming out uh, you know and want to either compete or just want to look better in a bikini and are just you know sick and tired of just being at home and not being you know feeling you know like you know they don't work out and uh, so we're getting 
getting a lot, a lot of women. Um, and Hint to the men out there, you want to keep your women, cook food for them. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, we have a lot of women, and that I would say that that demographic is that 30 to 45 range where, you know, you're at that point, like you said, you know, <laughs> things aren't working for you that used to work when you're in your mid-20s, so you want to change it up. So we have a lot of that, you know, uh, our clients are in there. And as far as, I mean, obviously we're in the industry, so we've heard of your guys' company, but the average person out there, the housewife or the, uh, you know, the nine to five guy, how, would, how do they find out about you guys? Like, do you ever get like any type of stats? Like where did you, they see your ad and stuff like that? So, you know, where the market is well, to work? Right now, um, we've, we haven't done any kind of conventional marketing, none mm -hmm. whatsoever. You know, everything's been social media and, um, you know, we're, we're doing over 10,000 meals a week. I mean, you know, we're really cranking out a lot of volume. Um, so without any conventional, uh, you know, marketing, we're going to start now ramping up things in magazines, you know, we're putting together deals with, you know, uh, AMI and stuff like that. So um, we're going to start, but a lot of it's just a website. A lot of it's, you know, social media and, you know, we're getting a lot of hits. We're getting a lot of shout outs. Um, a lot of clients are reposting and this just happened organically. You know, clients are just repost, uh, posting pictures when they receive their meals, <laughs> you know? So what we do is we repost their pictures. Like, look, this client receives, sure. and it's turned into this huge thing now that everybody, when our clients receive their meals, they send those pictures and it just, it travels all over the place. You know, mm -hmm. people get tagged on them, you know? So uh, the, the word is spreading and now with social media, yeah, you know, everything things at arm's reach. You have people all across the world hitting us up, you know, people wanting to know, do we have food in, you, can, do you offer food in Italy? You know, yeah, I'm, ser I'm serious. Canada, in Italy yeah. of all places. Yeah, Look at that. Know, every, every, capital you know, of the world, right? We've gotten uh, requests from the UK, Italy, Spain, yeah. Dubai, Panama, Australia, Canada, yeah. Mexico. It, I mean, it, it's... You know. Do you want to know what it is? It's not. It's not only that it's a good idea and that it's convenient and that you know obviously now people have no excuse whatsoever to diet because these guys are going to make you food for you. I mean, how hard is it? You get a box, you open it up, you say this is my week, and you eat it. But you know the food tastes good, and that's why you guys are getting so much traction with this because again the meals and like I'm not just saying this, they really do taste good. Okay, it's like you went to a restaurant, you ate it. That's why I'm asking you who who like you got for these uh, chefs because they're they're master chefs. Yeah, or we something. won't give up any names. Good. Those, those are our connections. <laughs> keep them. <laughs> Listen, and we'll and we'll and we'll keep coming by from a few foods now. If I'm out there and I don't know how to reach you, how do I connect with Fuel Foods to get my meals from you guys? Fuel Where meals, do I go? Fuel meals. Where, where just, a few meals. To, just, just to touch on that, since we've started, there's, we've seen a lot of companies now, so a lot of little smaller companies start up and start putting the name Fuel uh -huh. in, in their meal prep. So we've gotten a lot of that. A lot fuel, of, meals. fuel Meals. Fuel Meals. Jeff the producer says Fuel <laughs> Meals. Right. right. So um, we're known as Fuel Up. You know, just basically, you know, our DBA is Fuel. But, um, you know, basically you could just go online, you know, www.fuelmeals.com. Um, um, you could just hit us up on our IG, which is uh, fuel underscore up. Um, you know, that's basically how we're getting most of our traction. You know, um, people are just going direct to the website. We're, we're, it's all direct sales with us. We have no distributors. We have no, so it's just, you're coming to us to place your order. So I can go right to the website and say, I want this, and boom, you guys send it out. Yeah, and the, that's the, great. Perfect, the beautiful thing about the website is you actually can see what you're ordering, and if it's a build your own, you have a drop-down menu where it tells you each article of what you're getting, each item has its macros. So it breaks down the macros exactly for you. So, you know, certain people just don't know four ounces of chicken has X amount of protein, so if it has it all laid out for you. Also, so, it adjusts the macros as you change. So if you right. go from huh. four ounces to six ounces on your next meal, hmm. it'll automatically adjust the macros on that meal. So there's, so there's never a question as to how much protein, fat, exactly. or carbs you're once, getting. Once you yeah. build out your meal, it has your total macros, you know, your calories, your fats, your proteins, all of that in there. See, now that combined with the fact that you guys have custom meals and that, you know, the fact that you cater to, you know, guys who are diabetics and have special needs, I mean, it makes it a no-brainer. There's never, never going to be an excuse anymore, okay? You have your supplements covered with gear. You have your fuel, you have your fuel meals, fuel up, covered with fuel meals fuelmeals.com uh, fuelmeals.com guys I want to thank you very much for coming on thank you guys for having Maurice us Maurice Cecilia thank you thank Joe Burgos thank, thank you, you guys. fuel meals fuel underscore up on Instagram www.fuelmeals.com get your meals customized how you want it macros broken down perfectly protein fats carbs and I'm telling you these things taste amazing Joe we're going to have to have some fuel meals during this break please alright here we this go this guy's got me starving talking <laughs> <laughs> I'm Jeff the producer that's Joe Piatara we'll be back in just a minute It's not about perfection. 
It's not about how much weight is lifted or how many miles can be ran. It isn't about the wins or losses or even the competition. At the end of the day, it's about you. How you feel about yourself. It's about making progress. It's about pushing yourself and learning just how far you can take it. It's about setting goals and demolishing them. It's about seeing the limits and knowing you are limitless. It's about never giving up and never giving in. Do you have what it takes? Welcome back to Gear TV episode 5. I'm Jeff the producer, still here in the Gear TV studios located in Long Island, New York. As always, I am abandoned by my former co-host. He's still my co-host, but as of right now, he's my former co-host because he's not here. Although there is someone else in the studio. We might get to him in a second. I'm not sure yet. But my former co-host who used to be here, Joe Pietaro, editor-in-chief of Fitness Rx for Men, online or .com, however you like to say it. Last week, we showed you a Gerard Butler lookalike. This week, we have a person I don't want to look at. I just want to thank our guest this week, Joe Burgos, CEO of Fuel Meals. You can check them out at fuelmeals.com or on Instagram, fuel underscore up. And make sure you get all of your meals from them. And also, of course, joining us was Maurice Asia, a former bodybuilder who I think should get back on that stage. That's right. We're all watching, Maurice. He is the president of Fuel Meals. And listen, guys, there's never an excuse to get your meals in, especially now. You, you'll be traveling at a hotel. You know, you don't want to spend a thousand bucks per meal to get your steak, chicken, rice, or whatever it is that you diet on, or maybe you just want regular food, or maybe you have no idea how to prep diet food. Well, guess what? You don't have an excuse anymore. FuelMeals.com. Customize your meals. Get them sent directly to your door or to wherever you're traveling, not only in the U.S., but across the world. Check them out once again, FuelMeals.com. I want to thank my co-host, Joe Piatar, once again for taking time out of his very busy schedule to join us. This has been Gear TV Episode 5, Gear TV Live. I'm Jeff, the producer. Until next week, have a good one.